Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, YB. Um, I'm Nim Gik Siang from the Penang Heritage Trust. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the government for giving the uh, civil society chance to be involved in the Penang Transport Master Plan and got uh, accepted our proposal to have a comprehensive Penang Transport Master Plan since 2008. And uh, also accepted uh, the civil society's proposal to engage Helcro in uh, serving into our transport system and as adopted the Helcro plan in 2013. Unfortunately, the plan has been you know, modified, modified until now. This is a current transport master plan. And I have a few concerns about this plan because especially when uh, the government uh, called for people to review the EIA report of the PL1, and which I've read the report more than 10 times. And um, the more I read, the more I couldn't sleep. From the PL1, uh, first of all, I was very excited because it's going to take 15 minutes from Gani Drive to Bangla Pass. It's very good. But then after reading the reports, it says that it is going to cut through Penang Hill. I'm from Heritage. And then Penang Hill is going to apply for Biosphere, UNESCO Biosphere uh, status. And it's going to cut through the dam, um, 55 meters from the dam. And the dam is a uh, dam built in 1958 and completed in 62 by Lim Gautong, not by the British. And with 2,005 million tons of water. So that's my biggest concern. And the area is the fracture area of uh, the granite of the hill. And the third, uh, another concern is that the, in the report also says that after PL1 PL are completed, which will take five to, uh, five to seven years to be completed, during these five to seven years, there'll be congestion, but that it will be saturated in 2030, which is exactly today, I mean, your visions. So will it help or not by having uh, PL1 and it is going to compromise so much on the environment, the green, you know, because I really appreciate uh, uh, YABCM's uh, initiative of you know, providing a greener Penang. That's what we are hoping for, looking forward. But we, how many trees we are going to cut you know, by having uh, the PL1? Uh, is there a possibility to review it? And then after that, because I look into the whole transport master plan, we are going to have about 70 kilometers of elevated structure on this small island. That means 32 kilometers, uh, 30 over kilometers of elevated highways and 42 kilometers of elevated LRT and monorail. So, and Penang, if you make Penang Island one round, it's also 70 kilometers. So it's going to seriously jeopardize our aesthetic of the township and streetscape of uh, Penang Island. So is, uh, YAB is going to review the, can we review the whole PTMP so that we have a more holistic PTMP and especially like PL1 because you know, in 2030, it's been saturated. So are we going to build a PLL? I mean, two is in the pipeline, two A is in the pipeline. Are we going to build PLL three, four, five, six, like in Beijing? Or do we have a better alternative? Yeah, thank you. We have no alternative. We do not have the space of Beijing. Look at the geography of Penang Island. You know that whatever that can be built had been built. You do not want it to move uh, to the hills, of course, and they are control over hill development. Practically, our northeast corridor, there is no space to build any highway at all. And Laboraya Lim Chong Yu was created through reclamation. It is not built on existing uh, space available. It was built through uh, reclamation of the sea. Likewise, as you move up, any uh, planner would say that there is no more corridor for Penang Island on existing uh, built environment. That's why the alignment was chosen so that it will have the least disruption to existing communities by uh, going into the hills through tunneling. Of course, uh, Ms. Lim has raised many pertinent uh, issues, particularly technical issues. We will issue a statement in a day or two addressing all these technical issues. I think it will be too technical here to talk about these technical issues. But we will issue a statement in a day or two. It is already prepared so that uh, we can appreciate why uh, this alignment had to be chosen the methods of construction and uh, the concern of the community about uh, the geological aspect of the uh, Penang Hill, whether it is strong enough for a tunnel to go through. I think our uh, 
uh, experts uh, feel that Penang uh, uh, rock granite uh, would allow such tunnel to be done. And there are so many tunnel being built in Malaysia. There are many cases that we can look at. I'm sure uh, the best practices will have to be complied when building this uh, tunnel. Don't frighten the people that in one blow, the whole Penang will be blown up. It's not to be done that way. In English, there is a term, inching our way, inching our way, inch by inch. Practically, the tunnel has to be built that way. Huh? Inching its way into the hill by control blasting. And after control blasting of uh, maybe half a meter length, concreting will be done immediately to stabilize the exposed area. And then inching its way to the, the, the other side and to see lights at the end of the tunnel. So that would be the uh, construction method. I'm not in the construction business, but this is what I've been told. So I think nobody wants to damage Penang through this project. I think it is crucial that we have this uh, for the future. While Lobo Raya Lim Chong Yu at the moment it is uh, in road engineering term, it is service level F minus. That means tak jadi lah. You need to uh, divert away from Lobo uh, Raya Tun Dr. Lim Chong Yu. And yes, all highways will become saturated, saturated in peak hours. Not that it cannot function in normal time. It may downgrade the service level, but definitely it is needed. Uh, for the long term. Yeah. Thank you.